Hello everyone, welcome back. What you are seeing is my eventual setup at my first ever comic book show. I set up as a dealer at a local comic book show. I wanted to see what it feels like to be on the other side of that table for once. And man, I had a blast. So what you're seeing is I think roughly like 10 or 12 short boxes, a box of slabs, and then three or four long boxes. You can see my uh, display rack that I built by hand. Well, hopefully it, it, it stands up when we get there. And then I have some other pieces of art. I'm bringing an extra table. I'm literally bringing everything but the kitchen sink. Um, I'm also bringing a dolly, which is crucial if you're ever gonna do this. You've gotta have some way of rolling these bad boys in there. I'm also bringing some absolutes and some um, hard covers and some omnibus. And just basically, trying to remember to bring every single thing I possibly can. It's snowing, it's January in West Virginia, it's cold, but it's gotta get done. Um, this is a local show that I've been to as a buyer, but like I said, I'm setting up as a dealer. Um, we have this GMC van, it's kinda like an unmarked van, it's like something you don't wanna be around, like if uh, like somebody's like, hey, come over here to this van. You, you don't wanna go near that van. Um, but in this case, this van holds many great comic books. So this is what it looks like when we get to the show. This is what you're allotted. You're allotted a chair and a table. So you could either buy like a single table or a double table. And when you have these opportunities as a dealer, you have to make that choice. How much space are you going to get? Well, I set up two tables and this is my setup. Unfortunately, when I started setting up my rack, I assembled it incorrectly, so I had to put it up twice. But man, I'm really glad. Like, I love how this turned out. Um, I think this is a beautiful uh, setup, in my opinion. I've got a little bit of everything. Um, I, I tried to put things on the wall um, that are there for everybody. Um, I'll kind of talk about that later here in the video, kind of stick around as far as my thoughts of the whole thing. But this, this was my, my display. I had a top row of slabs. I had all my short boxes here in the front, like, you know, runs. I was trying to sell things as a run. I had my uh, slab box open, a lot of nice 9.8s, 9.6 books, a lot of modern books. Um, and then I tried to have everything labeled. One thing I did not do is I did not price a single thing. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. This is me cheesing in front of my, uh, my display here. I felt great. Um, it wasn't really an end cap space, but it, you know I was kind of one of the first uh, vendors that you would see when you came in. So this is in a local uh, mall, and it it was surprising so much foot traffic. So I'm gonna kind of give you guys an idea as to what uh, like a buyer would 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 see coming in. So like to your left would be you know where you would enter in, and then this is kind of the the dealer's corner. Several dealers set up. Um, several other comic dealers, and there was a few guys that had set up as a uh, set, set up as a toy toy dealer um, and some Funko Pops and stuff. That that stuff's really big. And this area has a lot of people that are interested in um, uh, you know nerd culture, pop culture stuff. So this is a really great area for that. A lot of these guys I know. A lot of these guys you have seen me hunting and uh, getting hauls in their in their shops. Um, I'm cool with everybody there, and it, it was a it was a great experience. Uh, it's always good to see those guys, and everybody's super friendly. And if you if you want to be successful, this is definitely a a, sh a, a show that would be good. These guys, I hadn't met these guys before. This was their booth. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have another video where I kind of. I do a little bit of digging and I kind of want to show you guys what I got. Stick around for another video for that. This video I just wanted to talk predominantly about my experience as a dealer and what I think you guys should do and what I'm going to do in the future as far as uh, how I want to approach things. So one of the big things right off the bat that you want to be aware of is you, you need to have everything planned out as much as you possibly can. Be completely prepared. And one of the main ways of being prepared is being prepared to make the sale, to close the sale, to make it as easy on the person that is buying to close the deal. And what I mean by that is have change, have 
cash on you so that you can give change to somebody, have all your 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 your, your money apps, your cash app, Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, have all the options available for somebody because you don't know what apps they have. And be willing to, you know, use any of those apps. Okay, so without further ado, let's get back to the house. Let's talk about my experience and what I learned and how it went. All right, everybody, so we're back from the show. I'm, I'm still kind of buzzing from it. It just happened yesterday, so I wanted to make this this video as fast as I could so that I kind of was still fresh and I had a lot of those thoughts still with me. So I had I had no idea what to expect going into this. I could have I could have sold literally nothing or I could have sold everything and I, I didn't know what to expect. So as far as uh, financially, I'm sure a lot of you guys want to know about this. It was fifteen dollars to set up as a single table, which is excellent. All right, so let's talk about pricing, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are interested in. I did not price anything. There was no price tag on any single item on my booth. So. There's a couple schools of thought on that. Um, you know, I've always been the guy going to these different dealers, and I'm seeing those prices, and I'm like, no. I, I mean, <laughs> those are those are not prices that I think are reasonable or even close to fair market value. My uh, kind of theory about this was, let me not price the books, make kind of put the burden a little bit on the buyer as to you know, have them make an offer and then go from there. Um, this only works if you kind of have an idea of what you have. I mean, if you had no idea, you know, the values of things or you hadn't kept up with the values of your books or kind of had just a general idea, then this strategy does not work because you don't want to be the guy that's like eBaying everything when somebody's bringing it up to you to, to check out. But at the same time, you don't want to be the guy that has no idea and giving away stuff for literally nothing. So I kind of was in between. Um, there was a couple situations where I did, uh, you know, look up some values on some books, but I took it as a situation where, okay, if I were to sell this on eBay or sell this online, I'm taking 20% off plus shipping, taxes, the whole bit. Give that, give that that to the buyer. I mean, let the let the buyer have the opportunity to get this now. That's a lot less headache for me because I'm paying all these fees. I don't have to worry about shipping it, getting damaged, getting lost, getting stolen. But let's give folks a discount now. They feel great about it. I feel great about it. They get what they want and they don't have to worry about shipping. People hate paying for shipping. I know I do. And I just I thought that would be the best option and it actually is a like a strategy in retail is the no price model um, and and to go that route I, it worked it, it it really worked for me um, I think a couple guys were kind of put off by it specifically I think other dealers because it was like uh, you know it's like uh, well, you didn't even price your books man and I'm like well you have your books priced and they're so far off that I'm like, it makes me not want to buy. I, I'm just, I'm just that guy when, and I, I realize a lot of the times, you know, you price stuff a little bit higher to, um, you know, allow for that, the haggling and the wiggle room. I get it. But if I see, you know, I, I just, just like that Cincinnati Comic Con, I keep coming back to that. If I see a book up there, it's like $2,700 for a $1,500 book, screw you. I'm not buying from you. You're, you're, you're price gouging. You're, I, I shouldn't have to haggle $1,000, $900 or whatever to get the book back down to a fair, a reasonable fair or a reasonable price. That That's just my mindset. I think everybody that bought from me was very, very happy with the prices. We definitely made our money back. I was completely blown away um, by how many people came into the show, how many people were so excited to to buy and to talk about comics and the things I love. I'm getting chill bumps talking about this. Um, I truly got to experience what it felt like on the other side of the table. and. 
I never realized. So let me back up. So when I do when I do the YouTube uh, sales and I, I do those, you know, they've been very fun. But it's a very one way conversation. I'm I'm talking to people. You know, I'm, I'm typing things out. Or I'm saying things. People are talking to me only through text. So it's like it, it feels very one way. It kind of feels like a hollow social experience. And and you guys know me. I'm kind of like social kind of outgoing, so I like to talk. And uh, when I had these opportunities with people that came through, wanted to talk, wanted to talk shop, it was like a situation where, oh my gosh, this could be your job. I mean, this this is what people do. And obviously, I'm, I'm sure that excitement fades over doing this for years and years and years, but what I felt in that moment was a first experience of making money doing what I love and talking to people about what I love and what they love, sharing their passion, sharing my passion, and getting get, getting something to somebody that really wants it. I've kind of talked about this in other videos. I've made a video, it's like, do, do comic book dealers even like comic books? Well. I, I want to practice what I preach, and um, you know my my kind of how I approached people. I I, I tried to to you know I, I would greet them, hey, how's it going? Even people walking by, just to you know kind of break that barrier. It's like, hey, I exist. But it's the first thing I would ask somebody would be, hey, what do you collect? Um, I know a lot of times you go in a store, you go in a retail store, or whatever, and, and you know somebody's like, hey, can I help you with anything? I don't know why that is, but it, it, it's like a it's like a shutdown question for me. It's like, well, I'm just looking. You know, that's like the automatic response. Well, what do you collect, or what do you like? What do you uh, uh, what do you read? Those questions kind of demand an answer in a way, and um, and I truly am interested because I literally had a little bit of everything, and I've read a little bit of everything. And um, I really enjoyed talking to these people, um, and I had a blast. I did not realize how profitable uh, this can be. I, uh, I was very, very, very fortunate to have a great success for my first show. So I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier in the, in the video. Just being prepared. Um, we'll we'll kind of talk about what my experience was. You have to. You need to be prepared. to To do this alone is very difficult, um, especially if you have a lot of people at a booth. It would be very easy to steal things. I, I hope I didn't have anything stolen from me. I don't think I did, but it's it's one of those things. It's very hard to keep eyes on everything at one time, and especially if you've got multiple people looking. You know, I want to talk to everybody. I want to talk to the people. I want to make their experience at my booth positive. I, 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 you know, I want to connect with them. And um, it's very difficult alone. Also, setting this up. Um, so we were in a mall. It's not like I can just go to the back door and set, you know, just just put it right in there, and that that was all there was. I mean, I had to go through the mall door. I had the dolly. Um, you know, I'm just carrying things by hand. I mean, I'm, I'm like sore today. <laughs> it's just, you know, you if you're going to do this, you have to have help. Um, and the transportation of the things, you know, you've got to have like a van, you got to have like a U-Haul, you got to have a truck, you got to have some way. If you're going to have any like decent sized display, you're going to have to have a way to transport it. Um, and I kind of talked about making it as easy on the buyer as possible. Um, I know me from my experience. I mean, if if it's difficult to make a payment, I'm less likely to to give you the three hundred dollars, the five hundred dollars, whatever it is, because it's like I'm already paying you for something. I don't want to have to make it harder. I I tried to make it as easy on everybody as possible. You got to have a plan for food. Uh, I was in there. I set up at 10 a.m. and then we were back in the van by around 6 p.m. So hour setup, hour tear down roughly. So I was in there for about six hours. So I mean, that's lunch and dinner pretty much. Um, 
I, I kind of just ate lunch. It was it was one of those things where I'm sure you guys have experienced this. It's um, you, you, once you get that rush, you get that that feeling. You you just don't even want to eat. I don't know. It was just like I just wanted to keep going. It, I can see how this this gets addicting. This gets uh, um, I don't I don't know. I, when I was a kid, I always I always liked setting up, you know, like a lemonade stand or like a, um, you know, like uh, setting up as a garage sale. When I was a kid, that would excite me. That that's something I've never really done as an adult, and it didn't dawn on me till the night before. I was so excited. It was like um, I haven't been that excited for something in a long time. Like. Uh, I was I was literally like a kid on Christmas, and I, I don't. I, the money is what the money is, but it was it was such a new experience that it was like I was super excited, and I think it showed. I, I think I uh, I think I did well as far as communication, being being uh, outgoing, being happy, being somebody that you wanted to talk to. I talked to all different types of people. Um, it, it was awesome. It was awesome. My expectations were down here. I'm one of those people, it's like, set your expectations low, that way you never be disappointed. It was, it was incredible. It was awesome. So I can't wait to do my next con. Um, and that'll be here a few, a few months later. I'll, I may be able to set up at this show again in a couple months. It was just so much fun. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to make additional videos um, about this and kind of talking about my experience because it's just kind of a whole, it's a lot to put into one video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If any point in time you like this video, give the thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.